Hey guys, welcome. In this video, I would like to show you how you can uh, write and deploy smart contracts in Solidity using Remix IDE. Remix IDE is a basically web application. So all you have to do in order to write your very first smart contract in Solidity, all you need is your browser. And then inside your browser, just go to remix.ethereum.org and then you would see uh, this beautiful IDE. So uh, here you have a workspace. Here is a regular editor that where you can create new files, new folders, and just write your Solidity code. Of course, uh, I'm not telling you the Remix IDE is the best option to write uh, smart contracts for production, because then usually you need um, to write some tests and you need some orchestration of your smart contracts. So you need a migrations, uh, and then you can use a tools like Truffle open zeppelin or hardhead um, however here is i think a great environment just to try out a solidity especially that you can easily deploy your smart contracts to the test net to the mainnet and then you can um, just try to test and uh, verify your smart contracts within this environment so okay uh, first of all i'm gonna create a new file the very first uh, smart contract and the smart contract, I will call it fee collector, uh, because uh, this would be um, the, the smart contract that basically is able to take money and the owner of the smart contract uh, can withdraw that money. So we're going to create a very simple uh, smart contract just to show you how easily you can create the smart contracts. So first of all, if we are creating the contract, uh, we are using here the Solidity uh, language. Solidity is a special language that you can use for preparing smart contracts and the uh, Ethereum virtual machine. Solidity is an object oriented high level language. Um, and I think it's quite similar to C++ and maybe uh, JavaScript. So if you are familiar with these languages, I think you should not have any problems. Uh, in the description to video, uh, to this video, you can find some free resources from which you can learn the basics of the Solidity. Because in my video today, I would like to just uh, quickly show you how you can start um, writing contracts and how you can interacting with them from the Remix ID. However, if you need the basics of the Solidity, like how uh, write uh, functions, uh, what types are inside the Solidity, I think you can find everything here in this official docs. So whenever we are creating a contract, we have to name the contract. So this contract would be named fee collector. Um, and of course, we have to open the body of the contract. However, before we write any um, code, um, we have to always specify what version of Solidity we want to use. So we need to basically specify this in our um, code um, in every file uh, that that has the smart contract code inside we have to specify this uh, just uh, to inform um, the the compiler what version of solidity actually we are using so we are having here pragma solidity and we are using the latest version of course if you are watching this video in the future probably uh, you might uh, change the version of the solidity here in the compiler section. So uh, this is the second item on the menu. And here you see all the versions of um, the Solidity compilers. And um, I think it's especially if you are experimenting, if you want to try something, it's, uh, I think, um, advice to check always the latest version of uh, the Solidity because you have the access to the latest feature in your uh, in the Solidity. Of course, for some legacy applications, you might need to choose other version because you might use some of the features of the of the language that um, were depreciated. But of course, we're going to use the latest version. And OK, we have uh, our our smart contract here and right now we're gonna create a constructor 
So whenever we are deploying the smart contract to the network, uh, then um, for the first time uh, the constructor um, can be called. So, so it's the special function which is called whenever the smart contract uh, is created. And of course, like in any other languages, uh, we can pass parameters to the constructor or we can just leave the constructor without any parameters. And we can write here some code that would be invoked whenever the smart contract is actually deployed uh, to the blockchain network. And here I will uh, just write in the constructor, I will save information inside the smart contract about the owner of this contract, uh, smart contract. So basically, uh, I want to have um, the, the variable which I will call uh, the owner. So this is the special variable which will hold information about who is the owner of the smart contract. And Solidity is typed language. So if I want to keep um, any uh, information inside this variable, I have to specify what is the type of this specific uh, variable. And um, in the blockchain world, in the Solidity, um, the ownership um, is represented by the public address. So we are not dealing here with uh, some API keys. We are not dealing here with uh, JSON web tokens. Uh, in the blockchain world, uh, if you are calling the smart contract, if you are deploying the smart contract, if you're reading from it, or if you are issuing some um, some transactions or calling the functions from the smart contract, uh, you always operate with your address. So we're going to store the address of the owner of that smart contract. So we have to specify the type of this uh, variable to address. And we're going to uh, mark the, um, the variable as public. So you see here that whenever you want to specify the variable, you have to specify the type of this variable and you have to specify the visibility of that specific um, variable. Of course, you can read all the details of that stuff in the um, in the official docs of the Solidity. But here we have the really simple uh, variable, which is the address public owner. And here in the constructor, we're going to sign that the owner uh, is the message dot sender and message dot sender is a specific a special variable in this uh, solidity world so uh, whenever uh, somebody is calling the function then under message dot sender we're gonna see the public address of the caller so let's say i'm gonna um, deploy this smart contract this fee collector with this account uh, then the message sender would be actually my public address so so that 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 would be under the message sender and I'm signing, uh, assigning um, that this uh, value under the um, under the variable called owner. So right now we have a really simple smart contract that all it does is actually creates the smart contracts and assigns uh, the owner under uh, this variable. So let's uh, let's um, try to actually compile uh, this this specific. Um, file, we have one warning about not specifying the license of our smart contract. Uh, so just to shut out uh, the, the compiler, I will copy here the information about the, the uh, about um, the license. So this is MIT. And now you can see that we can click on the compile the fee collector, we can even click here auto compile. So so, so whenever we we change it, and save it, uh, then it would be automatically uh, recompiled for us. So right now we have this smart contract, and I think it's the perfect moment to actually deploy it. And here if we go to the next uh, section of the Remix IDE, here we have the interesting options in which we can um, deploy and run our transactions. And here you have the environment. One environment is JavaScript virtual machine. So this means that we are able to deploy our smart contract not into the real blockchain network, but we can deploy our code into the um, JavaScript memory. So basically, in this memory of the browser, we have the, the simple version of the blockchain to which we can uh, deploy the smart contract. And of course, you may ask the question, why the hell we need that, right? Why, why we need uh, to deploy something into the memory? It doesn't make sense, right? But um, 
it turns out that if you want to try your code or just to be sure that your code is working before actually deploying the code to the real blockchain network, you can deploy it to the memory because then it's much uh, faster. So you can just check that, OK, the logic works. And once you are sure that everything is fine, then you can deploy it to the testnet or even to the mainnet. So here we have this environment, which is a virtual machine. We have here various uh, accounts. So uh, right now uh, I can and choose uh, the account uh, which I'm interacting with the virtual machine. So this actually is something like I would use my MetaMask, my wallet, but here I'm just using some test wallets that are connected to the virtual machine. And right now let's uh, click um, the deploy. And if we click the deploy, now you can see the list of deployed contracts. And here basically we have just one thing that we can call on this smart contract because automatically if we have the public variable, then we have a reader to that uh, public uh, variable. So if I click the owner, now you can see um, that I'm uh, that this is the address of the person which actually um, deployed the smart contract. So for instance, if I change the account and if I click the deploy again, now you see that we have two instances of this contract deployed. And the second instance, if I call the owner, you actually see that the um, address here is completely different than in the previous case. So we have uh, two instances of our of our contract deployed. So of course now our uh, contract is actually not that interesting, right? We have just a constructor, but I think it would be great if we can send the money um, to this uh, specific smart contract. So in order to the, uh, send the money um, to the smart contract, we have to prepare the special function, which is called receive. So whenever uh, we want to uh, write logic for our contract that is able to um, receive some money, then we have to create the function called receive and we need to um, mark this function with the payable uh, keyword. And then we have to also turn the visibility of that function as external. And for instance, right now, if we have the function receive, we are Po uh, it's possible to send actually the ether to that smart contract because whenever we are deploying the smart contract, you can see that we have the address of the smart contract. So this smart contract is deployed under this um, address. Of course, this address is not real because <laughs> it lives only in the JavaScript virtual machine. However, we will now deploy our smart contract um, into the uh, Rinkeby test network. So you would see that we can also use very easily the render IDE to deploy the smart contract into the um, testnet. So uh, the smart contract has the address and we are able to send the money. So this smart contract will hold the money. And here we have the function called receive and this function would be called whenever somebody sends money to the smart contract. And right now, I think it would be great if we can not only store the public value, which is the owner, but we can also store another value, um, which would be the balance. So right now I want to have the, um, the public, um, the public variable, the store information about the balance. So whenever the fee collector smart contract receives money, we're going to increase the balance so we can track how much money is actually stored inside the contract. So right now we have to add a type for this variable and we want to keep it as an integer. So I will use the unsigned integer 20. 256 and I will mark this um, variable also as the public one. And right now when we have the variable called balance, we can here um, just type balance uh, plus equal um, message value. This is equivalent to something like uh, balance uh, plus message value, right? So it's you might know this from JavaScript or other programming languages that we are just increasing the balance. So the function receive can be called twice or fifth times. And whenever we receive the transfer into that contract, we just want to increase the balance and we need to know so we can know uh, how much money is inside the contract. 
So message dot value is another uh, special uh, variable in the solidity, which basically lets us access how much money was sent to the smart contract within the transaction. So if somebody is calling the function, the message sender is always the person which calls. So basically is the address. And whenever we are sending some money, the message dot value holds information about how much ether was sent to the smart contract and it's represented in way. And we can call we can save that uh, smart contract. However, this time we're gonna deploy it into the RingKB test network. So if I uh, select here the ring, uh, the in injected web tree, uh, then the Remix IDE uh, is connecting to my MetaMask wallet. So right now I'm using the account one on the RingKB test network. And uh, here you can see that Remix IDE is connected to my uh, wallet. If you are doing this for the first time and you select the injected web three and you have the MetaMask, then MetaMask will ask you about connecting into the Remix uh, Ethereum uh, ORG. So uh, you might accept um, this whenever you want it. So uh, here we have the account, the one from the MetaMask. And now if we want to deploy this smart contract, if I click here the deploy, now you can see that MetaMask asks me about um, issuing the transaction. So if I will confirm it, then uh, we are deploying our, our very first smart contract in Solidity uh, into the Rinkeby uh, test network. And after some time, you see that we actually deployed the smart contract. So we have the smart contract, we can call the balance, the balance is zero. And here you can see that the owner of the smart contract is actually the caller. So I'm the owner because here is obviously my current um, address. And here, uh, if we copy on the address of the smart contract and if we go then you can see that it's our smart contract so this smart contract is basically uh, deployed to the blockchain you can see that our code was uh, compiled uh, into um, into that code that is not really readable to humans and now our smart contract is here on the blockchain and now we can start calling it so now I will send money uh, to this um, to this address. So this is the address of the smart contract. And if I go into the to my ring B, um, I can just here uh, type the recipient. And here I can uh, decide that I want to send for instance, zero 0.02 if and if I select and I have the contract interaction if I click the confirm uh, now I sent just 0.02 if uh, into that contract so let's see the the block explorer and here we see that we actually have the balance so uh, our transaction just arrived uh, to the smart contract and if we call the balance here again now you can see uh, that actually uh, the money was received however our smart contract is not ideal because we have some money inside the smart contract, but smart contract only knows how to receive money. And there's no option to uh, get this money back because this, um, this specific uh, smart contract only receives money and we deploy it. And now we are not able to change the code of this smart contract. So let's fix it and let's deploy it again. So this time we're going to create the function, uh, which gonna call uh, withdraw. So I will use the keyword function and withdraw. Uh, and this function uh, will basically uh, take the parameter. So so we can take um, how much we want to withdraw. And then we also want to specify to which address we want to withdraw uh, this money. So we're gonna have to um, type the type uh, address um, payable because uh, we need uh, the type of the address to which we can send the money. And we can type here test um, address. So here you can see um, that we have the function and the function is called um, withdraw. Uh, and it takes two parameters. One is amount and second is um, the address destination destination address. So this function, whenever it's called, uh, we want actually to transfer money to this address. And every address, every pay payable address in the Solidity actually has the um, function, which is um, called just transfer. 
So we can uh, just specify here the amount that we want to transfer from our smart contract. So basically, we will call this function with two parameters. One is how much money we want to withdraw. And the second is to which address we want to send it. And of course, whenever we do the transfer, we of course have to deduce it from the balance. So balance is always uh, representing um, the correct uh, amount. So uh, from the balance, we have to deduct the amount and compiler is uh, shouting that um, we have to mark the function uh, how it should be visible so whenever we want to have the function that can be called outside from it, so anyone can call it we need to um, have the visibility set to public so right now this uh, this function is public and everybody can uh, call it and you might be uh, surprised that why we have the function that everybody can use because as you can see uh, the smart contract collects money so it holds 0 0.02 and then we have the public function which anybody can call so this can result uh, with the stuff that anybody can come into my smart contract and just by knowing uh, the smart contract address and the ABI code which I will cover in a separate video uh, then you can just start interacting with this smart contract and everybody can withdraw the funds so I guess we have to uh, secure this function a bit. So this function and this transfer can occur only if this function would be called with owner account. So this would be the special function that of course is public, uh, but it can be called only by the owner. So there is a uh, nice um, solution for that we can write require and this require um, is checking basically um, the first um, the first parameter is checking whether it's true or false so we can write here that the message sender has to be owner and if uh, it would be false then we want to return the error which would be only owner can withdraw so right now we have the guard that a function would be called and here uh, the solidity will check that the message sender so basically person uh, or address that calls the function is equal to owner and if um, this would be not equal owner then it would be false and it would be this error raised and all the other execution of the smart contract is stopped so require is a really nice uh, function which let us do some uh, sanity checks inside the functions just that we are sure that uh, the function can be called and another uh, i think useful thing that we can check in this function would be uh, that this amount is uh, lesser or equal balance just to not have situation that the balance is 0.02 ether and somebody wants to withdraw two ethers because obviously it was result in some error so we're gonna check it and uh, we're gonna uh, present to the user nice error like insufficient funds so right now i will uh, save this smart contract um, it's gonna be compiled and now we're gonna deploy it um, again uh, to uh, our Rinkeby test network uh, and you can see that um, whenever I change the code I'm not able to use the old address see that old smart contract is already deployed and I'm uh, not able to change the code of this smart contract so here I will deploy another one so if I click the deploy uh, then MetaMask again is asking me about the transaction fee because of course I have to pay to the miners that uh, they will mine my transaction and I have to pay the fee for actually putting my uh, smart contract into the blockchain. So this transaction fee depends on the size of your smart contract and how heavily are you using the memory. So the bigger the smart contract is, the more uh, variables are you are using, the more memory are you are using, you will pay more transaction uh, fee so right now I, I will confirm that and in the minute we need to uh, we would see the second instance of this fee collector uh, smart contract so right now you see that we have the withdraw function which takes some uh, arguments so again uh, I will copy it and I will send some money uh, to this um, to this um, 
smart contract. So let's send, let's specify and let's send 0 0.03 uh, if um, to, to this smart contract and we're going to confirm that and let's wait uh, a second for the transaction to be actually mined. Yeah, and now we see that uh, the balance actually updated and now I will try to withdraw the funds. I will specify uh, that I want to withdraw uh, not all uh, this amount. So I will just maybe try to withdraw one. Uh, so 0 0.01. Uh, and I will, uh, I would like to send it to some other address. So for instance, we have here some address that holds zero if, and I will just specify here the address. So I'm providing this as an argument, and I will call a withdraw function. You can see that we have the error because the only owner can withdraw. And the reason why we have it is that in the MetaMask right now I have this account seven. And if I go to the previous account, the one which is the owner, right? Because we have the owner here and we are checking it. So if I click the withdraw again, now you can see that the transaction works. So our require actually worked and checked that we are the senders. And if I click here now the confirm, now uh, we have the transaction um, in, in, uh, in the blockchain to be mined. We have to wait a second and um, the balance should be updated shortly. So you can see that right now it holds 0 0.02 ETH. So it's no longer 0 0.03. Um, if we refresh that, that this smart contract holds 0 0.02. And if we check my account that previously had zero if now we can see that it holds 0 0.01. So that was uh, just to show you how you can develop smart contracts. Of course, this is uh, just uh, an experiment. If you want to create the smart contract that does uh, way more things, it's also po possible. You can, for instance, emit events from the functions. Uh, you can write some private functions that uh, are just accessible uh, from within the code of the smart contract. So they cannot be called publicly by anyone. So there are a lot of interesting topics that of course you can do with the smart contracts. However, here you can see how powerful it is because you can just deploy the smart contract once, it goes to the blockchain and then you can write a logic that is responsible for taking um, the money and proxying it to some other uh, addresses. Of course, you can here also add the list of the people that uh, are whitelisted in order to withdraw the funds. So you can use the one single smart contract and do a lot of interesting use cases. I hope you liked the video. I hope you learned something new. Of course, if you have some more questions about uh, Solidity and smart contracts, post them down below in the comments section. Uh, I know that that I didn't cover everything about um, the Solidity, but I just wanted to show you how the constructor works, how the Remix IDE works, how you can deploy the smart contracts, how you can choose the environments and do the compilation. And then of course, in the upcoming videos, I will show you how you can deploy the smart contracts and then start interacting with them from the React.js applications. So that's all what I have for you. Thanks for your attention and see you on this channel.